that have been on request for uh, for quite a while already from uh, for many of you, and we uh, actually are implementing it now. So I think it'll be uh, very beneficial uh, watching exactly what I have to do over here. So let's, without any further ado, let's get actually into the webinar itself. And uh, I just want you to let you know, as you can see also on my screen, um, I'm working in uh, not only in SolidCAM 2016, which is what I'm showing, but I'm also working in SolidWorks 2016 as well. And I'm also working in Windows 10. Okay? Uh, so all of these new uh, uh, programs are actually being put all in one on my screen, so you can see exactly uh, what's going on. Now, um, since I've been working also with the, uh, with the development as uh, part in 2016, uh, you may see me also touching on certain buttons around here that you may not uh, understand exactly what I do, which I take for granted, so I'll try also and stop and explain some of these as I'm going along. For example, you'll notice I have my toolbar, my SolidCAM toolbar out at the bottom over here, as you see over there. Uh, the reason why I have this is because if we don't have this over here, uh, then I have to always go into Tools, SolidCAM. This makes uh, working with SolidCAM a little easier. Um, so the way, what I usually do is I usually right-click over here and just click on uh, SolidCAM. Just a moment. There we go, SolidCAM. And I have my SolidCAM toolbar, okay, with all the options that I need from SolidCAM over there. Um, also, there's one little feature that's re really nice over here that we added is that not only do we have open, but we also have here re browse recent parts. So I don't have to go into tools, solid cam, and uh, recent parts. I can go directly over here, just click, and I go into recent parts, which is exactly what I did right now. Okay, so let's continue on now with the actual webinar itself. Um, I'm going to choose my first part. And let me explain the part a little bit, and then I'll start working on it. Um, if we take a look at the part itself, you'll see uh, I have, if I'm looking at this view over here, you'll see we have a pocket that has to be done over here, an open pocket. And uh, we have that exact same pocket on the other side, but in a mirrored view. Uh, in addition on this part, if I turn it to the side a little, you see we have these holes that have to be drilled out and in this particular case these holes are the same as these holes which is on a different level and not only that I also have these holes mirrored to the other side as well as you can see over here okay so just a moment Slight problem with Windows 10 here for a moment. <clears throat> okay, we'll be right with you. And okay. Now, as you can see when the part itself, uh, we have those holes which are mirrored on the other side. And besides that, on the flip side, I have these pockets over here, which is at an angle to the very top surface over here. And I also want to mirror that to the other side. Not only that, on the side over here, I have these holes these holes that I want to drill out, and um, I want to rotate that around a specified axis. Okay, so let's get started actually with machining the part, and I'm going to start out by doing a pocket operation over here. So I'll go to pocket, choose my uh, home position, and I'm just going to choose this edge over here. I'm going to mark it as an open pocket by marking my open edges, one, two, and three. Those are my open edges over there. Uh, I'll choose my end mill, 
I'm just going to choose a 10 millimeter end mill over here. Uh, I have my levels, my upper level being over here, and my depth being down to here. Now, uh, when I work in technology, working with open pockets, I like to use the option of open pockets of uh, use profile strategy. And let's take a look exactly what's happening. If I take a look, you'll see that the tool is going down. We'll take a through the top view, and you can see that it's actually working uh, in the di correct direction that I want. It's always working with a climb milling, okay? Always on the left side of the uh, geometry itself, like a clear offset, but always working climb milling. Now, what I like to do is I like to take this and mirror it to the other side over here, but I like to keep the exact same cutting direction. Okay, what we've done now is simple. If I right click on that particular operation, you know we have transform, which I'll get to it in a few moments, but we have another option here outside of transform of mirror. This mirror option will actually create a new operation. You'll see that in a moment. Now, it's first asking me about which Mac position I'd like to mirror about. Is it Mac 1 or any other Macs I may have? Or I can uh, mirror it around a speci specified plane. In this particular case, I'm going to use Mac 1 position 1, which is exactly uh, in the middle of this area over here. And I can choose which direction of my uh, home position. Do I want it on XY? Do I want it on ZX? or do I want it on YZ? In this particular case, YZ is the one I want, and you can see it's actually giving me a preview of my geometry being mirrored to the other side. I'll accept that, and look what happens over here once I do that. Now click on OK. It created a new operation with a new home position as well, and even says the new home position is based on my Mac 1 position 1 YZ plane. Okay, and now let's take a look also at the actual simulation of this, uh, of this uh, toolpath itself. Okay, we'll do the actual simulation of both toolpaths, and you'll see the first one, as I showed you before, is working climb milling. And now, and it started from this side going over here. Now when it goes to the other side, you'll note it's continuing working climb milling, okay? So you're keeping your same technology, just your geometry has been uh, mirrored itself. You see it's now starting from here, keeping the same cutting direction at every single point. Okay, now, now that I've done that, I'd like to move on to these holes over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, choose a drilling operation and I'm going to put it on position two, which is these holes over here. That's where my home position is, is set for. Now, um, I'm going to choose my geometry. Just click on that floor over there to get those two holes. Uh, my tool. I'm just going to put a spot drill in it right now. That's all I want to show. So I'm going to use a small spot drill that I need over here. Uh, my levels, my upper level is over here itself. I'm going to set my drill depth to zero, having the diameter value of the tool go down to this particular diameter over there. And that's it. Note, I have my two uh, operation, my two holes being center drilled over here. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to put it over here as well. So, if I were to use your regular translate option that we know, we'd have a little bit of a problem because it's not on the same level to translate it over here. But what we have now in translate is the option of actually translating it over a specified axis. 
and have that give me the direction. Let's take a look how this works. If I were to go into the operation of a transformation and go to translate and go to matrix, okay, I'm going to say I want a total of uh, two copies, okay, and a distance of six millimeters. But you note it's not doing it exactly the way I wanted. It's going on the same level. But we can do is we have custom axis. If I use custom axis, okay, I can choose the axis over here. By clicking on this line and accepting that, it's now using that axis to give me the direction that I want for my translate. Just click on OK, accept that, and you can see that we have this done over here as well, okay, at the exact same levels that I need them. Now, I also want to do a mirror to this, these two holes as well, but you know what? I'm going to leave the mirror alone for a moment because I'd like to actually now do an operation on these pockets as well, okay, and this one and this one, and I'd like to mirror this to the other side. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is start a new operation and we'll go to pocket and I'm going to choose the right um, uh, the right home position that I want to use and you can see it's going to be on this area over here. And you can see also that this home position is not exactly the same angle as the floor, as the top floor itself. It's not perpendicular, it's not perpendicular to this floor, rather to this surface over here. Okay, so we'll create our pocket operation, and we'll just click on this edge over here, and it'll take the entire geometry. And uh, besides that, I'm going to mark my open edges, mark an open edge, which is going to be one, two, and three. And, of course, I have to choose my tool, so I'll do that as well. Okay. And, of course, my levels, my upper level being the top over here, that point over there, and my pocket depth up until that floor over there. Technology, as I mentioned before, I like working with the open technology, open pocket technology of use profile strategy. Okay, and as you can see, it did that. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to mirror this operation to this side over here. But since I have to mirror this as well, I'm going to do them both at the same time. So I'm grabbing actually multiple operations that I have to mirror around the same area that I had, around the same point, around the same plane. Okay, so I'm going to choose this operation, which is a translator operations. I'm also mirroring the translate as well. And this pocketed operation over here. We'll go to the mirror option. And again, I can use around a specified home position. I'm going to use Mac 1 position 1, which is on the other side completely. And again, use around YZ. You can see the mirror being done over here. I'm just going to accept that. And you'll note that we have a new operation for our drilling with a new home position for our drill and a new operation for our pocket over here. So I've done multiple operations and mirror them all and getting a new operation for each one of them with a new home position for each one of them as well. Obviously, this has to be a different home position. It's a completely different angle but you'll get the exact same results. That you exa is exactly what you need. Okay, I'm going to close this part now, and I'm going to start a different part. Uh, I'm going to go to, again, our recent parts. I love this button being here. And I'm going to go to my next part over here. Now, in this particular case, what I'd like to do is I'd like to mill out these pockets over here. 
Okay. Uh, you'll excuse me again. I have a little bit of a problem with my Windows 10. <coughs> excuse me. And what I'm going to be doing actually in that pocket is I have the three pockets on one side. And I'd like to, first of all, rotate around the middle those three pockets, which is on a completely different uh, axis. And then I'd like to mirror that to the other side as well. I also have those holes on the bottom, which I'd like to translate, but in two different directions. Okay? So, excuse me. <clears throat> Okay, just a moment. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to start my first operation, and I'm going to use actually iMachining 2D to mill out the pocket. I'm going to start with Mac 1 position 1, which you can see over here. And uh, the pocket, I'm going to start out with this pocket over here. And um, I'm going to use, to grab that geometry, the multi-chain option. I'll just click on that surface over there. Accept that. Choose my tool. And my levels going down to that depth over there. Upper level being over here. Actually, I chose the wrong home. Okay, let's go back over here and choose the correct home. I need the chrome actually parallel to that one over there. Choose my geometry. Okay, multi-chain. Click on that surface over there. Levels. Upper level is over here. And my lower level being down Okay, uh, Okay, we have a technology wizard. I'm not going to go into that right now. But let me just do save and calculate. Now, as you'll see in a moment, I created an operation with the, tra with the operation being done on that pocket. But now I'd like to rotate that around this center axis that I have over here. Okay? So when I go into my transform, I'm going to go into rotate and I'll use the option of delta. Now let's put, I want a total of say three rotation points and a delta angle of 90 degrees. Okay, obviously at the way it is right now it's going around that center point which is not what I want. But I can choose either a specified home position or a custom axis. If I go to custom axis, I can choose the axis I want. If I click on this line over here, okay, note it has a direction. I can also flip the direction over here to make it go the other way. Because I want to go 90 degrees, it has to be going in the opposite direction. As you see, it's being rotated around that exact point. I'm just going to click on it and say, Calculate, and I've actually now rotated that operation around and getting it done on all three sides. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to mirror that to the other side over here. Okay, so again, right click, mirror. Now let me see what I have here. I have here the different Mac home positions, and I have one exactly in the middle, okay? I can also use a selected plane. I don't have to use a home position and go and do this. If I have a plane that's also in the exact middle, I can go to selected plane, go to my SolidWorks tree over here, and choose the plane that I want. In this particular case, I want it around the right plane over here. 
and it does exact the exact same thing. It translates, it, it uh, wrote, sorry, it mirrors it around that particular plane. Click on OK. And what's happening now, it's creating that new operation on the other side as well, as you can see over here. Okay, now, I'd like to actually go ahead now and drill out these holes over here. So what I'm going to do again now is I'm going to, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to go to uh, drill and I'm going to choose my uh, home position. Now, uh, I just want to remind everyone when looking for home positions, for your different uh, positions, you can also go to coordinate system over here. This time, this makes it a lot of times very uh, much easier to find exactly what you're looking for. Now, I named my uh, uh, home positions exactly the way I wanted to make it easier for me to find, and I saw positions for the holes. Okay, and that's the one I want. Just get rid of all the check marks and mark only the one I want. Okay, that's the one I want. I'll, I'll use that one. And although I can do all of these in one operation, I'm going to do it right now. Only, only, I'm only going to do one hole. So I'll choose this particular hole, and I'll accept that. Okay? The tool, I'm just going to use a spot drill for now. And the levels, my upper level will be on the surface over here to a depth of zero with the diameter value being 10 millimeters. Okay. As you can see, when I calculate, we have that one position over there. Now, I'd like to transform this and translate it actually in a matrix in this direction as well as in direction of this line over here. So I'm actually choosing two different directions. Let's see how this works now. If I go to translate, matrix, I'm going to use my custom axis. Okay? My first axis being over here. If I click on, say, this line over here, note the direction of the, of the arrow. It's going from here to here. If I were to choose it over here, it would start from this side to that side, but I can always flip the direction. So I'm translating it from this direction to here. Okay, that's my first axis. And my second axis is going to be this line over here. I'm going to have number of copies in my first axis is three with a distance which I measured before of 55 millimeters. And number of copies in my second axis is going to be uh, four, a total of 50, sorry, 50 millimeters. Got that wrong? There we go, 50 millimeters. Now also, sorting works here as well. So I'm actually going to use a sorting over here. And I'd like to work in this particular way, okay? One direction going directly here, the shortest possible route. Click on OK. Save and calculate. And you can see all of these were done. Now, I'm going to go out here, and um, I'm going to go to my operation and do a quick uh, machine setup because I'd like to show the simulation being done in machine simulation. So let me go over here and pick my X, Y, Z point, which I have at the bottom over there. We'll click on OK. Now I have my machine set up as well. Now let me do my uh, simulation, this time using the simulation of machine simulation. What I'd like you to see when I'm doing the machine simulation, how the machine actually persist, <coughs> sorry, positions itself correctly for every single one of those pockets and the holes as well. Okay, just a moment. As you can see, we have the part on the machine itself. 
of course, the entire machine looks like this, but I just want to see the pocket, so just to see the table and the head itself. Okay, so we'll start our simulation, and as you can see, it's first starting in that pocket. Let me speed it up just a little. Here we go. It's machining out that pocket over there in the proper position. When it finishes that, which you'll see in a moment, we'll go a little faster. There we go. Okay, finishing off that pocket. Now it's going to flip around to the proper position and I actually did the rotate operation around my center axis and machining it also again exactly where it's supposed to be machined. Same thing over here. Now it's going to go over after it finishes to the other side. In other words, it's going to flip over as you saw and it's working now in this pocket on the other side. This pocket over here. So everything is being done in the exact same uh, position that it need, where it needs to be done. Okay, finishing that pocket, and of course at the very end it also did those drilled holes. Okay, now what I'd like to do is close this and load my last part. So we'll go to uh, this part over here, part number three. Okay, in this particular part that we see over here, this is a bracket that's used in aero, in, uh, air, from the aerospace industry that's mirrored to the other side as well. And note it's not on the exact angle as the X, Y, or anything else like that around my uh, flip plane over here. Uh, it's completely angled off to the side as well. So what I'm going to do, the first, now this part also, as far as the stock goes, um, the only thing we really have to do here uh, if I wish to show you the stock, was is to mill out the actual pockets itself. Okay, probably for uh, reducing the uh, weight of the part itself. Okay, so we'll go in and start our uh, operation. Again, I'm going to use eye machining. So I'll go uh, to the eye machining. I'm going to choose my home position. Okay, which you can see now is this surface over here. And I'm going to create my geometry. Uh, I'll use multi channel, be a lot quicker. Do one, two, three, four, five, and six. I have my geometries there. Uh, my tool be the one I have over here okay and my levels upper level being this surface over here and my depth going all the way down to that surface over there okay we'll just accept this okay as you can see the operation was done now what I'd like to do is mirror these operations to the other side. So again, I'm going to right click on the operation and go to mirror. Okay? Again, I can use the home positions and then mirror it around the specific area. Okay, or I can do the following. Again, I can go point to selected plane. Now, I had made a plane in the middle over here. I created one, so I'm going to actually use that plane, which I have over here. And as you can see, 
it's being done exactly where it needs to be done. Okay? We'll just click on OK. And we now, again, we have a new operations. Remember, now that it's a new operation, I can change things if I want over here, technology-wise, if needed. These are separate operations, okay? Um, with its unique home position as well. Um, let me just do a quick simulation. Or I can just show the toolpath over here. And you can see the toolpath on this side as well as a toolpath being flipped around, mirrored to the other side as well. So one of the major uh, options that we asked for, for years of being able to mirror uh, around the plane, how uh, uh, not only around the specific uh, home uh, around its home position, but around the specific plane, and to keep the same cutting direction is now available in SolidCam 2016s. Uh, okay, I'm going to get to some of the questions here. Uh, we have a comment here, okay. Uh, I, uh, about the G code itself, I can't uh, explain it to you exactly yet. I can't show it to you here. Uh, but in, further, uh, in further webinars, we'll get further into that as well. Uh, again, if there are any changes that have to be made uh, for this function in GPP, I don't think so, but again, you'll get a better answer on that later on as well. Uh, as far as um, mirror operations with I finish, okay, uh, that works just as well. It will keep the exact same cutting direction. The, um, for, for, for a very, very simple reason, realize all we're doing is making a mirror, really, of the actual geometry. Okay? The, the uh, actual technology stays the same. We have a new operation keeping the same technology that we had before. Okay? So this is important. Okay, Eddie. Uh, yes, Sidney. Uh, thank you very much. But let's see. Okay, we have uh, some questions. Okay, please uh, see more questions. Maybe uh, you have uh, you can answer. Yeah, yeah. We have more uh, more questions, Sidney. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. uh, this mirror and transform operation not uh, taking. Uh, geometry at all. I'm not sure exactly. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what you're doing. What you mean by that is it not taking the uh, geometry at all? If you can be more specific, uh, basically what it's doing, it's it it's actually going to the other side. In other words, uh, technically even even if I don't have a pocket on the other side. Okay, um, but um, but I want to have do a mirror there. In any case, I can do that. Now I just want to go all the one more step that we're to something that we're also working on in the future. Uh, we're also working in the future, uh, which is still in development, uh, of of, of uh, taking 3D operation or taking entire parts and making a mirror of the entire part, not only of specific operations or specific geometry, but the entire part, with options of possibly doing it as a new, um, as a new, um, uh, a new project or keeping it in the same project. These are things that are still being developed, but we are definitely working on those as well. Hey, Sydney, we have more questions. Don't answer questions about SolidWorks uh, OEM policy and uh... Uh, another topic, can... but we have more questions about mirroring. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
Okay. Yeah, there's a little issue of the Windows 10 that we know, that we saw. Uh, all plane mirrors opposite keep the origin. Uh, as, as far as, like I said, as far as the technology, like I remember, right, the only thing that changes is just the, uh, the geometry itself is mirrored and the new home position is created. The technology stays the same. In other words, if I was working climbing, I stay working climbing. The technology, the new operation, keeping the exact same technology. Technology is not mirrored, just the geometry. Okay, Eddie. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Sydney. And uh, I think uh, this uh, webinar uh, shows uh, very simple and clear the power of uh, SolidCam 2016, which based on uh, your on our resellers' uh, feature requests. Uh, so, um, yeah, enjoy the, this new version and. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the webinar. Me personally, yes, very much. Thank you very much, Sydney. Great work. Good job about these new features. And uh, uh, we'll see you next week. All Thanks right, take care. And good luck and end of the year sales. We are here to support you in all you need. Thank you. All right, bye-bye.